Hi, <coughs> today in this class we will learn more about stability. What is stability in atmosphere? What do you mean by the term stability? Actually it is a factor of temperature we can say. And uh, we learned about lapse rate, LR. Lapse rate, that is 6.5 degree Celsius per kilometer. Or <coughs> 2 degrees Celsius per 1000 feet. That is what we learned in the first chapter, atmosphere. But is this a fixed value? No. Because we learned in the first chapter itself that troposphere, the lowest layer of atmosphere is highly unstable. <coughs> so many factors in, the, in that layer can be unstable also. So this stability means temperature stability is also not a stable thing it is also an unstable thing actually what is the reason of this instability the main thing is the transfer of heat from one parcel of air to the surroundings <coughs> suppose this is the earth there is a parcel of air over here okay it is made to lift up with any with some due to some reasons it is made to lift up it is here okay what should happen actually we know that air is not a very good conductor of heat air is a bad conductor or an insulator to heat okay so the temperature in this parcel when it move up what will happen to that temperature? Here the pressure is more, right? Because it is close to ground, pressure is more. Here pressure is less. So what happens is, this parcel also expands. When air expands, what happens? Energy in it also has to expand. Energy is not increasing, but it is simply getting distributed that means it will become cooler it should become cooler that that means in this system suppose this is a closed system what happens is energy is not allowed to enter or go out of the system this parcel okay so when it is moved up <coughs> what happens is it is not able to give the heat outside or get the heat inside because it is a insulator bad conductor it is not a perfect insulator but still it is not a good conductor we can say so what happened is <coughs> it expanded and lost some of its temperature okay this temperature loss is called it is suppose this parcel is a parcel of dry air then this loss of temperature is called a d a l r dry adiabatic lapse rate why it is called adiabatic lapse rate adiab is a means no diabatic means not entering or leaving <coughs> okay so heat is not allowed to enter or leave the system so it is called adiabatic okay in a diabatic process heat is allowed to enter or leave the system but in adiabatic process it is not allowed to enter or leave so air is a good, uh, bad conductor uh, so means it is an insulator so it is not allowed to enter or leave the system so this is a DALR we can say what is the DALR value actually the dry adiabatic lapse rate of air is 9.8 degree Celsius per kilometer or approximately 3 degree Celsius per thousand feet <coughs> But actually it doesn't uh, correlate with our lapse rate, 6.5 degree Celsius per kilometer, right? Yeah. But what is the reason? As I told, air is not a perfect insulator. It is a, some sort of insulator, but it is not a perfect insulator. So it will absorb or leave some of the energy, some of the heat energy. And so this we can call as ELR or environmental lapse rate. 
what is that it is the actual value of lapse rate which we can see which we can measure okay this need not be 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer it can be higher or lower okay when <coughs> it is 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer what we call is it is a normal lapse rate ELR is fine okay but in a real situation it can be different also ELR can be greater than DLR also DLR as LR is 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer it can be higher than DLR also it can be very lower than 6.5 degrees Celsius also it can be isothermal also that means a parcel of air is lifted up from here to here the temperature has no change that means the process is isothermal no temperature change has happened okay and something else has, uh, else can also happen here it is 5 degrees Celsius suppose I know it, when it reach some 1 kilometer above the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius what is that that is called the inversion means lapse rate is there but in a inverted rate it was 5 degrees Celsius over the near the ground and it is 10 degrees Celsius when it is lifted up 1 kilometer that means there is an inversion okay <coughs> so one more lapse rate is there that is called SALR here we call it as dry adiabatic lapse rate okay then comes saturated adiabatic lapse rate when saturated air is lifted up what happens is see this is a earth parcel of air being lifted up okay when it is lifted up what happens temperature decreases but due to that temperature decrease air is saturated over here okay here it is saturated some of the water content means vapor content will condense to become water uh, 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 water drops liquid water that is at the expense of this temperature that means instead of 9.8 degrees celsius if the air was not saturated it would be 9.8 degrees celsius per kilometer lapse rate would be there okay but here some energy has turned the water vapor to water so that much temperature drop will not occur so for as a standard saturated adiabatic lapse rate is 5 degrees celsius per kilometer we have found that it is 5 degrees celsius per kilometer okay why it happens once again I, I will say saturated air a parcel of saturated air is here it is lifted up adiabatically okay and due to the expense it has expanded parcel has expanded because there is less pressure that means temperature drop has happened when temperature dropped what happened is saturated air saturated air when temperature is dropped what happens condensation occurs because air can ha hold more water vapor when it is hot when it is cooled condensation will occur that air can't hold that much water vapor so condensation will occur condensation occurred and as a result what happened is temperature didn't drop up to minus up to means the temperature drop was not 9.8 degrees Celsius it is only 5 degrees Celsius per kilometer that is called saturated adiabatic lapse rate <coughs> is there any uh, relationship between dry adiabatic lapse rate ELR and SALR yes there is some uh, relationship between them we can say dry air is stable dry air is stable when DALR is greater than ELR actually it is 
what we should expect in the real situation and then in that case the atmosphere is stable we can say when the air is saturated it will be stable only if SALR greater than ELR suppose if SALR is not greater than ELR what happens is the parcel of air has been lifted up okay it will automatically sink down because that much lapse rate is not there so it will be forced to sink down to its original position that parcel of air so saturated air is stable only if SALR is greater SALR value is greater than ELR okay actually this also happens in atmosphere but we can predict because atmosphere is highly unstable and air can be air whether it is saturated or unsaturated it can be said stable means absolutely stable <coughs> when SALR <coughs> greater than ELR saturated air is stable when SALR is greater than ELR then of course unsaturated air and dry air also should be stable when SALR is greater than ELR okay that means stability will be there when we lift a parcel of air it will sink back to its original position that is called when air is unstable ELR is greater than DALR ELR as we know is normally it is 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer if it is greater than DALR DLR is fixed it is 9.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer if ELR is greater than DALR that means the situation is absolutely unstable it will change back to its original position as soon as possible absolutely unstable then comes conditionally stable conditional stability DALR greater than ELR greater than SALR in this case stability is there but conditionally stability stability is okay because DLR is greater than ELR okay it is stable but ELR is greater than SALR ELR should be less than SALR then only it should be stable if it is reversed that means conditionally it is unstable atmospheric condition is conditionally unstable so this is all about stability now you can start writing your exam about stability and in next chapters we will cover rain and uh, ice accretion thank you